So here it is then, our completed yurt base. So we're just getting to uh, the exciting bits now. As you can see, we have got the, all our bits out to start uh, building this yurt. There's the uh, crown of the yurt. There is the ground sheet that's going to go down. There's walls there. Uh, as you can see, the felt cover is absolutely massive. Um, and over there, I don't know if you can see, there's some poles and a door. So um, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to lay bitumen back carpet tiles onto the top of the yurt base. Um, and that will provide a really nice layer of insulation. Hopefully it's going to help keep the yurt nice and warm in the winter. And it's just going to provide something additional to try and preserve the yurt during the winter months. Okay, so there we have our bitumen carpet tiles laid down onto the base of uh, where the yurt's going to go. Um, a very good example of recycling. Um, these carpet tiles came out of a nightclub um, <laughs> and we bought them as a, as a job lot. So they're going to do a, a nice job now keeping our yurt nice and insulated underneath. So now we have got our ground sheet down on top of the base, on top of the pieces of carpet, as you can see. And what we've done is we've got a little nail in the middle with a piece of wood here, which we've been using as a sweeper to make sure that we get our diameter right. And that seems to have worked really well throughout the whole process. So there we go. Our ground sheet is down. Okay, we're now at the very beginnings. Um, we've watched all the videos, we've never done this before, so it's going to be quite exciting. Um, one door, first bit of wall. Right, here we go. So there we are, lashing the cords. Oh, that looks very good actually, I'm quite impressed with your lashing skills. You're lashing a lot better than I would, mate. Oh, he got a lashing badge when he was in the Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> That's just as well. And I bet you thought, I'm never going to use that skill again, didn't you? <laughs> <coughs> oh, look at that lashing going off there. Lashings of yurt. Lashings of ginger beer. That's what we need. Oh, blimey. If I'm doing this all on my own... Well, I'm videoing. I'm performing, oh, performing a useful capacity as project manager and chief filmmaker. Well, I was wondering what... Well, I was allowed. Well, I figured you'd be starting with that. Tighten that top one up. Right. Let's yeah. get another one up. Okay. Right. Oh. Oh, do you want me to try and lash? Here is the progress so far. Fiddling and lashing and adjusting and moving. We're starting to see the shape. I think there's something a bit peculiar gone off with that one there, but this side's looking very good. It's incredible. It's October the 1st. It feels like we're in the Mediterranean. Unbelievable. Okay, it's all gone a bit peat tong. Um, the um, crown is leaning and we need to slacken off the um, webbing around the outside. It's just not possible for someone to reach up and hold that tall enough. Oh my goodness me, now they're trying to make a construction using a wheelie bin. Um, and something else which I think is just not going to work but I'm just staying out of it it's just, it's just hopeless I just don't think we're ever going to get this year up we've got an hour and a half of daylight I don't really know what we've done wrong um, other than the fact that maybe we've got the diameter wrong I really don't know I think when we pulled it in with the webbing we've altered the diameter this, does, this looks incredibly unsafe to me. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if we get there. Hopefully we'll have a yippee video later on. 
if you've ever seen anybody putting a yurt up with a wheelie bin. I don't think they have wheelie bins in Mongolia, to be honest. Anyway, it's worth a try. Okay, I've now changed the title of this video from putting up a yurt to 101 uses for a West Wiltshire District Council wheelie bin. I don't know what they're playing at. I'm sure there's an easier way of doing it than this. I'm sure the Mongolians don't put their wheelie bins to hold their yurt crowns up. It's turning into a Keystone Cops video. So here we are, having used the patent Brooks wheelie bin technology, we have managed to get the crown flying on its own. There we go. Now we're just tying the webbing back in. <laughs> it's completely the wrong way around because you're supposed to put the webbing round first and then fly the crown. But with the aid of West Wiltshire District Council, we have managed to erect the structure of our yurt. Well, as you see, we're starting to lose the light, but the yurt is up by the covers, of course, which are going to have to probably go on now tomorrow morning because we're losing the light because it is October after all. But how beautiful does that look? Nice straight crown, all the, everything in place. And there we go. Um, okay, the front door's a little bit on the uh, on the skew, but we've got a plan for that. And for extra safety, we've also tied off the webbing um, because it kept slipping down. And the webbing is actually much more important than you think it is. It um, it, it really does hold that crown in place. Um, so yeah, a lot more difficult than we thought it was going to be to put it up, but that could just be the fact we're completely incompetent, I don't know, um, at yurt building anyway, because we haven't done a lot of it. But there's our lovely yurt, in the, in the, just as the sun's going down, we've got the structure up. Okay, it's Sunday morning, and as you see, I didn't get finished yesterday. Uh, we had some panicky moments yesterday evening, thinking we were going to have to take the whole lot down and start again. But we sent pictures over to the lady we bought the yurt off. And apart from the fact we've got one of the pieces of webbing in the wrong place, she says we've not done a bad job. So we're quite pleased by that. And it was very nice of her to let us, thanks to Jane, who let us interrupt her on a Sunday morning, um, to have a look at our efforts so far. But uh, the next bit is the exciting bit, is the covers going up. Okay, we're now just about to start putting the felt onto the roof. Um, I'm going to have to go and help, I think. Oh my goodness me. We're now trying to put, we're putting the felt on the roof. Um, using as ingenious methods as we can possibly think of. Um, this is the sort of yak felt stuff. Oh, almost there, he's saying, almost there. So we've got one person on the inside, two on the outside, and me being useful as ever on the video camera. <laughs> right, I think I better go and help again. So are you going to go up the ladder now, Brad, and, and, and tie that off at the top and then move round? If you don't get it right, Brad, and it falls down, we're going to blame you. <laughs> oh, so this is the first bit of it being tied on. It's quite interesting, really. I'll show you a little bit more in a minute. <laughs> well, it's on. It is a bit like putting knickers on an elephant, though. What? Oh, what, for a bacon sandwich? 
So am I catering manager now as well? No. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to feed. They're going. They're feeding it up from the inside now. Do you need an extra body in there, Sam? Yeah. I'm not doing a lot of good out here. There we go. Look, it's nearly on. Nearly on. Are people feeding it on the inside, pushing it around on the inside, pulling it on the outside. And that whole job has only taken us about ten minutes, really. It's amazing in consideration of how long the rest of it took us. Something we've actually done right. But here we go. Look inside. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Wow. So now we're going to tie it all into the crown. Okay, so now what we've done is we have tucked our brown sheep up all the way around. Because we intend to leave the year up, we've um, had to make sure that uh, that's tucked right up so that the wind and the weathering don't get in this winter. Um, it's probably going to be a little bit of a process of uh, experiment and see if it does get in and where it does and what we do about it when it does. Um, but uh, so that's what that was our next job that we've done. And if I can show you what it looks like inside now. Oh, isn't that exciting? Doesn't that look lovely? Okay. Right, putting the sides on has proved to be a complete and utter pain in the backside. So now we're resorting to plan C, which is to put all the sides up onto the roof, then tie them taut so that they just can't fall off. Um, so we're just doing that at the moment, and uh, we're all getting a bit hot under the collar, to be honest. I think I'm going to go make a cup of tea. Back soon. Right, so we've finally managed to get the sides up. We're just having a bit of a tea break because that was actually really stressful. That was the, that was the most difficult thing. That was more. Di well, mind you, I said that we haven't got the top on yet, but that was much more difficult than putting the roof flat on. But getting the top on is going to be interesting because we can't now access that from the inside. I don't think. Anyway, that's the beginnings of it. And I don't know if you can see inside. Look how lovely is it. Okay, having fought with the sides, uh, now the roof's going on. And, oh, as you can see, it's quite a difficult job to get that um, that roof over the top. But it's uh, but we're getting there. We're getting there. See, I thought it would have been a good idea to tie a piece of string to it so you could have pulled it over. Oh, he's got it. There's Bradley's phone going off again. Okay. Right. Putting the roof on. Whoa. We're very, very nearly there. <laughs> Bradley's head poking out the top of the air. Hi, Brad. <laughs> There it goes, just slides into place, sliding into place. <laughs> ah, so I've just seen the I've just seen the floor in our plan. The door isn't in the right place. I'll shut up now. Okay, we're just putting the horsehair straps on that run round so that we can fasten the head of the roof to them. They are um Really strong these straps, really hairy too. So must be a very strong way of making um, making room. And we've got three of these to go on um, around the yurt. This is showing all the horsehair straps all laced into place, holding the roof on. That's another job done. We're now about halfway through. Day two, putting this yurt up. It should only take four hours, apparently. But it's 
been a bit of a process of trial and error, I'm afraid, but we are getting there. And it's looking lovely. Ah. Finally, we've finished the job. We haven't tied the crown on yet, but yeah, look at the workers waving. <laughs> it's just gorgeous. And um, I will show you in indoors. It will, I will welcome you into our yurt in a moment. And here we are, Sunday afternoon, and we finally finished our lovely yurt. It's been quite a journey getting here. Lots of tugging and pulling and fiddling towards the end. Still got a bit of work to do around the door. Still got to cut off all the wood around the bottom to make it a perfect circle uh, for the base. But anyway, welcome to a little bit of Mongolia in Wiltshire. Here is the interior of our wonderful yurt. And that was quite a journey for all of us. Did you just poke me up the pole with a yurt pole? No, but I know one <laughs> Did you poke me whilst I was I videoing? Did you poke me whilst I was videoing? Charming. That's what I have to put up with. 